What's up everybody? My name is Sawyer Hartman and one of the coolest technologies that I've seen come out in forever is the FPV racing drone. But unfortunately there's very little information online how to fly these and even less information on how to build them. So naturally it made me want to do it a little more. So I dove in, I built one, I got it flying and I documented my process to share with you. Hope you enjoy. Howdy. Okay, so what kind of training did I have actually going into this thing? Well, I actually started flying DJI Phantom 2 drones in late 2013, which means I've been flying roughly six years almost. Over that time, I've actually logged over 2,000 hours on the DJI Phantom drones and I've flown them in almost every corner of the world, so I naturally thought FPV drones would be super easy for me. I was wrong. So, instead of buying a new drone and just wrecking them over and over again, I actually decided to switch to a simulator where I could learn to fly and crash drones. But as of recording this video right now, I have over 150 hours logged flying FPV drone simulators. And yes, my mom, my girlfriend, and all of my friends thought I was absolutely crazy spending so much time playing a video game. So the first step was actually to build my first FPV drone, but the problem was is there's not a lot of information online of actually what parts go into an FPV drone. So luckily on the DJI FPV website, there was a little square on the page that said the recommended other items that they would build this with. So like a complete noob, I just bought everything on that list uh, but in case you are wondering, these are actually the parts that go into building an FPV drone. There's the actual frame or body of the drone, there's the FPV camera, and there's the video transmitting unit, which for the DJI system is just one thing. Then you're also going to need a flight controller, which is this computer chip looking board that you have to solder wires into, good luck. And then attached to that is something called an ESC, which is another big computer chip that controls all of the individual motors of the drone. Then you have the actual individual motors of the drone, of which there are four. Then you have props to go on the motors. You have a LiPo battery that powers the whole drone. And then if you choose, you also have to put an action camera on top like a GoPro or something. But that's just the drone. You're also gonna need a pair of FPV goggles and an actual remote control unit. So for the first attempt of actually building the drone, I didn't realize how screwed I was until all of the parts started coming in and that's when I realized I have no clue what I'm doing. Shouldn't have dove off the deep end. You see, building these drones is like, com you're completely on your own. There's no instruction booklet and, and there's not really any help on the internet except for a few YouTubers. A couple of the YouTubers that really, really helped me were namely Joshua Bardwell, Mr. Steel, there's Ladrib, I think I said that right. And then of course there's Johnny FPV. So very luckily I found a YouTube video from Ladrib on how to actually solder the DJI FPV unit into the flight controller. And by the way, I had to learn to solder for this as well. So uh, if you don't know how to solder, don't worry about it, you can figure it out. You're just probably gonna blow up a few drones like I did. But soldering all those wires into the flight controller was the first step and this first step proved to be so difficult it took me two weeks and I burnt through three DJI air units. And then icing on the cake, when we finally got it right, we plugged it into a battery to see if it worked and this happened. Well guys, we got home, we already, we built, we built a whole drone um, and then it caught on fire. I'm not joking and uh, we'll try again on Monday. But we, we, got, we got further, you know, we're never gonna figure this out. I did the same thing on my next build. So on my third attempt, I got really, really lucky. It took about two weeks and $400 to get the parts I had blown up back in stock. I don't know what you believe in, but a miracle happened, fate stepped in. I walked into a car repair store looking for a plug that I knew they didn't have, and I asked the guy behind the counter if he had it, and he said that he didn't have it and he couldn't help me, but maybe his son knew, let me call him, he builds FPV drones, the not RC cars. <laughs> so we started from scratch and soldered everything new. We worked for honestly maybe six to seven or eight hours. And then once everything was finally in place, everything was attached and soldered, we did what's called the smoke test. When your drone is finished being built, you plug it into a battery 
to see if there's any smoke. If there's smoke, you have a short circuit and it's ruined and you have to start all over again. And in theory, if there is no smoke and everything is connected properly, you're technically ready to fly. There, good. Any smoke? Nope. And there was no smoke, we were ready to fly. By the way, I did not sleep one wink that night. It was like Christmas morning waiting for the next day so I could go try to get this thing in the air for the first time ever. And it went well. Extremely nervous. This is Sawyer made in flight. So first, nervous. First person putting on the goggles. I'm so nervous. Holy crap, I'm flying. So this first flight happened on Monday. And my goal was to try to do my first ridge dive on Saturday. Now, a ridge dive is essentially when you fall down the face of a mountain with your FPV drone. It's extremely challenging. If you crash, you're not getting your drone back, but it's also like mind blowing the cinematics you can get if you get good at it. Now, for the most part, the hard part's actually done. The drone's built. I have a pretty good grasp on how to fly it, but now we have to tune the drone. Now that the drone is in the air flying, we actually have to go in and start programming and using software to get the drone tuned to where it flies the way we want it to. For this, I literally watched hours of Joshua Bardwell's tutorials on how to PID tune your drone, and that's P-I-D, PID tuning. I have no clue what it stands for. I just kind of understand what it does. When I was flying the day before, whenever I would drop an altitude or give a little bit of throttle, I kept hearing this noise. Watching tutorials, I actually learned that this sound is called an oscillation. And in order to get rid of them, you have to raise the P and lower the D until it kind of balances out. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's exactly what I learned. So I just went to a field by my house by myself and spent hours changing my settings and flying and changing my settings and flying until it was starting to get a little bit more dialed. And the drone started to handle a little bit sharper. And there's actually a massive difference before and after. I felt pretty proud and this was another big win on the FPV drone chalkboard. So now that the drone was like in the air and maneuvering, I tried to find a couple different locations and spots that would challenge my ability as a pilot, but also keep me out of the way of people and breakable objects, which is a very good thing I did because I crashed a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, arguably one of the coolest things about this hobby is by learning how to build a drone, you're actually also learning how to repair your broken drone no matter what happens to it. And this is very, very important because every single time you go fly your drone, you most likely will break something. There is no GPS on these drones. They do not return to home. When they disconnect, they fall out of the sky and you cannot find them. So to get better, I literally have just sat in the park for multiple hours a day flying figure eights and trying to make it through trees and obstacles without crashing. Honestly, the biggest thing to know about this hobby is there is an extremely steep learning curve, not just in how to fly the drone, but also in how to fix the drone, how to tune the drone, and even just how to build the drone. I said this on Instagram and I'll say it here. This is the hardest hobby I have ever taken up and I taught myself how to play guitar. And then before I even knew it, it was Saturday and I had made a promise to myself to try my first real ridge dive before I uploaded this video. So this morning we got in my car and we drove north. This is the first mountain dive or ridge dive. Let's see how it goes. And when that drone landed, my hands were literally shaking like I had just gotten chased by a serial killer. It was like, and these are supposed to be what's flying. So I landed, I decided to call it quits, and we'll go try it again another day. But we tried it, we nailed it, we got it, the fear's gone, and the drone is up and flying. 
So what have I actually learned from my journey into FPV? Let me just sum it up for you. Number one, this is not a buy it once and you're done type of drone. This drone costs you money every single time you fly it, every single time you crash it, even if you don't crash it. It's, it's something I didn't know getting into this and it's something you should probably know before you dive in as deep as I did. Secondly, again, this is by far the hardest hobby I've ever taken up, not just the flying, but also the building, fixing, and actually programming. Be ready for it. It has a huge learning curve that even I wasn't ready for. Thirdly, flying in a simulator is by far the quickest and easiest way to get good at flying these drones. I watch my friends fly them in real life and they fly them like babies trying not to crash them. In the simulator, I would crash like maybe 100 to 500 drones every time I sat down. Play in the simulator if you're actually serious about getting better at being a pilot. In all honesty, if I hadn't put as much time into the simulator as I had, I wouldn't have even been able to fly this drone. And if I had, I would have crashed it straight into a wall. And honestly, the last thing to take away from this video is FPV drones are not for everybody. This is not for your travel videos to pop out of your backpack, put in the air, and get some visuals and come home. This is like a sport, it is a ton of adrenaline, and it requires 150% of your focus. And other than that, I made this video for all of my friends who have DM'd me asking how do I get into FPV. This is how. It's a pain in the ass, it takes forever, it's super expensive, but it's, it's a lot of fun, and it, it, the sky is the limit in terms of creativity, uh, but it's not for everybody. So I hope this helped you if you are curious about how to get into it. It can be frustrating how little information there is on the internet about this topic. Subscribe to Joshua Bardwell. He is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to this topic. And other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to subscribe. I make brand new film and photography related videos every single Sunday, and I'd love to have you here as part of the family. But if you knew nothing about FPV, I hope this video like honestly kind of covered it and gave you some more information about what it entails. Hell of a lot of fun a ton of work, but I believe in you. And I've sweated through my shirt, It's that's it for me. Until next time, remember, stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.